Let's take a look at what could be done as an alternative raw develop. You see that this particular image is just smashed in the shadows here. There's a little bit of detail in the highlights, but the camera is severely underexposed. What I want to do is transfer the raw file, not a TIFF file. So to do this, I'll choose File, Plugin Extras, and I'll select that I would like to transfer this to Aurora HDR. Now what happens is it analyzes the image. And Aurora HDR 2019 is launched. Now Aurora shows you a preview of what the image is going to look like. From the gear menu here, I could choose to make sure that there's no noise in the shadows and deal with chromatic aberration. Since we have a really bright backlit edge here, that's sometimes prone to chromatic aberration, which shows up as color fringing, usually a green or a magenta edge. So I'm going to check both of those boxes. It'll take a little bit longer, but it's worth the wait to have it automatically fix that. Additionally, if it doesn't fix it, you can tweak that under the hood. It now detects the scene type and analyzes the imagery to make the suggested corrections. And now the base image opens up and you see it's tremendously better exposed. There was the original, slightly lifted from the dark file, and here is the new image based on artificial intelligence. Using the HDR Basic tab, I can continue to refine this. You'll notice that Smart Tone makes it really easy to move the exposure here without changing the color. So this lets me open up those shadows a little bit quite nicely, and I prefer that over the Shadows and Highlights slider. Now I can further recover the highlights slightly in the sky or globally, and that works quite nicely. Instead of actually touching the highlights, I'm going to come down here and use the HSL controls. This lets me adjust a particular area. For example, I could pull down the blues to recover detail in just the cloud area without affecting the global highlights. I like that a lot. Let's pull down the blues and a little bit of the aqua and then go over to saturation and bring that color out nicely. And that's quite strong. Additionally, to really emphasize that sky, there's the polarizing filter. So this will cut through the glare and does a much nicer job than dehaze to bring out the blue sky. And that looks great. I really like where that's going. And now using HDR Basic, I can continue to refine. I like to turn on the clipping indicators here so I can really see if there's any crushed pixels. In this case, the blue pixels are frozen. So this means a little lift to the shadows is going to bring those out of being pure black. And then we can play with the black slider. A little bit of black is okay in the deepest, darkest shadows. Similarly, there's some room here to really bring up the white point. And this helps me push it so the clouds are nice and bright. Now we can refine that using Smart Tone, and it's really looking solid. Additionally, instead of just adding contrast, try Color Contrast. This richens the colors and adds contrast to the areas that need it most, and it goes beyond what normal vibrance can do. Additionally, feel free to do a small amount of HDR. I like just a little bit of the smart structure here, and it helps bring out some of the tone and definition. If we zoom into 100% here and take a look at the rock's edge, you'll see that we don't want to overdo that, but a small amount is well suited. And just look at how well the edging is holding up there on the trees. No halos or any types of issues, which is great. All right, I'm going to turn off those clipping indicators and just fit the image. And it's quite a bit improved. If we take a look at the split screen there, we see a world of recovery, which is just fantastic. Now, there are additional options here if you want. You could take advantage of things like an adjustable gradient which makes it easy to affect the top and bottom of the image. Let's go ahead and set that there, like so. And what I want to do is just pull down the exposure slightly at the top and boost the contrast on the top of that rock and make it a little bit warmer. And on the bottom here, we'll just do a slight lift and put a little bit of contrast in and cool that down. And that looks great. Remember, with any filter, you can toggle it on and off to see the change that it makes. I really like that. Additionally, I can apply a vignette here or just do that over in Lightroom, wherever you're more comfortable with. I particularly like that this vignette allows me to place it. So I can place it there 
around the object, or let's place the center right here in the archway. So now you see that it really is focused. Let's back that off a little bit, but with a greater feather, and you see that the vignette is creating some nice shadow leading across the rock's surface, but it opens up on our subject here, which looks great. Additionally, you could apply a little bit of inner brightness there to brighten up the center of the vignette. So this is more advanced than what you'll find with Lightroom's vignette controls. Now that I'm done, I'll just click the Apply button and the image is returned as a high quality TIFF back to my Lightroom library. It takes just a second to process, but pretty soon you'll see it back in your library and it's added automatically next to the original photo. Here was our original RAW file and here is the new TIFF, and that is just a substantial improvement. Remember, anything else you want to do inside of Lightroom is still there. Just jump into your Develop module, and you can easily take advantage of any of the other controls you're used to. For example, maybe I want to adjust sharpening. I'll hold down the Option key there to refine the masking edge, and just put a little extra pop in. And that looks really good with all that detail. At this case, I'm all set, and the image is completely enhanced.